Hi, Ben here for Ben Jacobson Photo, and today I have four travel tripods to review. Now, the premise of all four of these tripods for me is to be able to fit them inside my backpacks. I'm working on a back panel access backpack review at the same time. Uh, they'll be post this will be posted in the same review, so check the other video and the other photos to see which tripods fit in which bags and how well. Uh, and I'll have links to all four bags and all four tripods in the review. Uh, but to start us off, let's run down the four different tripods. Uh, this is a Gitzo One Series Traveler. It's their new line of travel tripods. This is a Davis and Sanford. Uh, let's see here. It's got a name of a TR654C-36. Complicated name. Uh, this is my, I believe you say it's Siri, but it's S-I-R-U-I, however you pronounce that. Uh, this is the 1204X, their carbon fiber travel tripod. And then this is a Faisal, uh, where is the model on this? This is a CT3441. Uh, all these tripods are similar in overall height, fully maxed out, and similar in height when shrunken down to fit in a bag. The exception is the Gitzo and the Faisal are both in the, they're about two inches shorter when collapsed than the other two tripods. So here you can see these two, and I'll put full specs online in the review, but you can see these two are very, very similar in length. And then the Siri and the Davis and Sanford are very, very similar in overall length as well. And then just to give you the comparison why you would want one over the other, this is the Siri. And this is the Davis, or this is the Gitzo. And when you put them side by side, this is about an inch to two inches shorter overall. Again, I'll have the full measurements in the review, so make sure you study those and whatever bag you're using. But when you put them base to base, it's a little over an inch off. So specifically for me, I'm looking at a Whistler 450 backpack that this and the Faisal are the only two that fit inside its insert. Its insert's a little snug. Um, whereas all four of these fit inside the Mindshift Backlight 26L, any of them. Uh, so depending on your bag and how much space you have, the overall length collapse could be an issue, it could not. Now, let me just show you how these all work. They're all similar in that there's a center column in the middle that's actually in its up position to put them away, and then they have legs that extend around that center column. You can hear this click. They, ha they all have multiple stops for angles. Uh, basically, there's a very flat option and then the traditional option, and then all the way up. Uh, usually, whenever I shoot with a tripod, I try to keep the center column down, but to collapse these and get them in their compact mode, you have to push that up. So you can obviously store these like this, they're, you know, that much longer. So it will work this way. If you store your tripod on the outside of your backpack, this might just be the way you carry these. Um, but for full compact travel, you put the center column up and then the legs go up around. So here's the Siri with its legs out. We'll do the Davis and Sanford next. Oh, we'll leave those legs short for now. Sorry. This goes down. Faisal. And now the one thing with the center column on the Faisal is, I did a review of one of their tripods quite a few years ago, where their legs would rotate when you go to loosen them. It makes it really hard to open and close the legs. They've fixed that. These are their, I believe, rapid, but they don't twist. Um, so the legs are fixed, but the center column spins. So why they didn't take that technology and put it on their center column when all these other guys have kind of a knock on Faisal there. Um, and then let's get the Gitzo. And now one comment on the Gitzo as I do this, the other leg locks are all trigger with your thumb where you pull it out. These you push to the side and I'll put some pictures in the review. It's, this is a quite nice lock, it's just different. Um, Gitzo also makes their, uh, I call these a spider, but the central portion of the tripod, these three are uh, machined out of aluminum. This is cast out of magnesium, I believe. Um, you can argue the merits of one or the other all day long, but this is a, you can tell there's a lot more uh, design that's gone into this piece. It's, it's nicer looking, functions a little bit better the way things rotate. Um, it's a very nice piece. Now you pay for that with a Gitzo. This tripod is about $750 to $775, I believe. Um, make sure you check the links on the pricing, but it is by far the most expensive tripod in the group. Uh, these two are basically $400 tripods. 
all three of those are legs only, no head. Uh, this Davis and Sanford, however, is 100 and I believe, I believe it's 180, 179.99. Uh, but it's somewhere between, you know, it's about 175 bucks. Um, it comes with a head and it's a great little tripod. The other thing is it, it's the only one in the group that has convertible feet where if you twist the feet all the way down, they cover the spiked foot, but you can twist them up and you have spiked feet. And when I'm shooting on rocks, I prefer spiked feet most of the time. So for the last two years, I've been using this Siri as my personal tripod and just dealing with rubber feet and you gotta find better footing for it. When you have a spike, they kind of stick to slippery rocks a little bit better. You find a little tiny crack or anything and it'll stick. So that's a great feature there. These two are stuck with rubber no matter what. The Gitzo has very nice rubber feet that'll thread off and then you can screw spike feet in here. You can, you have to be very careful with spike feet permanently on your tripod. You can't shoot interiors to houses. Uh, there's a lot of scenarios where you can't use spikes. Um, and it also will make it much harder to put it in a camera bag if you do store your bat, your tripod in that fashion. So just for your knowledge, this is, these are removable and replaceable with spikes and they sell a convertible piece similar to the Davis and Sanford. Um, that's actually what I have on my big tripod that I'm shooting this video with. So there is an option here to convert it. Uh, but yeah, and I will say the way these legs stick out on the Gitzo, they're much more cone shaped and come out much further from the leg. That helps a lot on rocks. The other legs are all a bit more cone shaped and I'll pull this out. Hopefully you can see it on the video, but it doesn't flare out as much. It makes it harder to kind of grab the edge of a, of a weird shaped rock. So this is my personal tripod. I've had this for two over two years now. It's been a great travel tripod for me. I've flown all over the place with this and, and taken it on all sorts of places you might not think you need a tripod, but it only weighs two pounds, so you throw it in the bag. Um, love it, but because I'm considering a low pole backpack and just to see what else is out there, I've got these four here just to do some comparisons. So a few other things worth noting is the, the leg locks. The series, you can push them, you can use them with gloves. I haven't had a problem with them, but they're very flat and, you know, just a, a small little piece on there. Um, I, like I said, I haven't had a problem with these in use, but the Davis for less than half the price has much easier to grab leg locks, which is interesting. Um, the Faisals are very similar to the series. Um, they're kind of halfway between, I guess. They are little flip locks, but they seem to be a little trickier to, to get at than the Davis. Still not bad, um, but the Davis is, is the best of the group of these three. Um, and then the Gitzos rotate out of the way. Um, you could argue what's better between this and the Davis. These are very nice. Those are quite nice. Again, that's half the price of these two and a quarter of the price of this. So there's a value there. Now, the other thing to consider is the size of this piece here that I'm calling the spider kind of determines the overall width of the tripod in your bag. So the smaller this is, the more compact it gets. The um, Gitzo is definitely the smallest of the group with their casting. Uh, these two are practically clones of each other. So I don't know how well you'll see that. I will post photos of these on the in the written review, but these are very, very close. The, the Davis is slightly bigger, but not much. Um, so just for, you know, they'll take a little bit more room up in the bag than the uh, Gitzo. And then the Faisal has the biggest of them all. So it folds up larger than the others. So just worth noting. Um, another thing is the Siri is the only one in the group where one leg and the center column come off to be a monopod. Uh, Siri has a short center column. It's actually on it right now, part of this, the whole column. If you take this off, this turns into uh, two pieces and one piece is shorter for if you need to get super low to the ground. Um, these two, I believe, both come with their own short, stubby center columns made out of metal. And I believe the Getzo does as well. Again, I'll put all that in the written review. I'll have a little comparison there. So now let's put them fully up and see how they, how tall they all get. Uh, I'm 6'4", so I obviously tend to like taller tripods. And now I never let the tripod determine the height of a shot for me. I always you know, I'll crouch down and stand all the way up and see what angle I believe works best whenever I'm setting up for a shot. But there are times when I want to be on my tippy toes to get the shot and you need a very tall tripod to do that. So I obviously want the longest tripod I can get for, uh, I don't want to say for the money, but for the given size I'm looking to fit in a bag, I want to get the longest tripod that fits. 
So we're going through, we have the Sirius on the, your right, then there's the Davis and Sanford. Now this is the Faisal. We're doing all these with the center columns down. And now here comes the Gitzo. And I will say leg lock wise, having, you know, as we use all these, the Gitzo has the nicest feeling locks. Now again, none of these are bad tripods. You could just go out and buy the Davis and Sanford because it's the cheapest. Uh, and you're gonna love its locks, they're all fine. Um, so we're kind of nitpicking a little bit here. But the Gitzo does have the best locks. These two, again, are very, very similar, the Davis and the Siri. And then the Faisal has very smooth rubber that feels like with gloves on it, it's just not quite as easy to grab. Um, they're also a little bigger, because I don't know if you noticed, but when I loosen the locks in fully compact mode, I get all three at once with one hand. Harder to do with the Faisal, because they take a bigger space. Um, so yeah, there's that. Now, one thing to notice here is obviously we're looking at height. Now, this does not have a head on it, so it would be this much taller. These two are similar in overall height. If we can get them to stand next to each other. Um, the Faisal's a hair shorter, and then these two are just a touch taller. The, um, the bottom of these tripods is right here, so it's only like an inch taller, uh, collapse like this. So it's not a huge difference. Um, but the other thing is if we then put center columns up, how tall do they get? Now, there's a reason I'm skipping the Faisal and doing it last. So you get center columns up, almost get my feet wet. And these two are taller by about an inch or two. Not a huge, huge difference again, but they are taller. Um, this one's about an inch or two shorter, but still we're at my eye level. This is a great tripod height for me to work from. It's just if I really wanted something tall, you know, is that inch going to make a difference? Probably not. Um, now, the Faisal has a plus and a minus here. It's the shortest of the group by about an inch down. Bring one stage up, it's getting close to the Gitzel, but, you know, two inches, three inches shorter than these guys. It then has a second stage to its center column. So it wins by far with that, but we all know center columns are the last stage you want to use. They're the least stable because it's all over one. It doesn't have that triangular support under it. So, you know, if you can get away with it, not windy, super solid footing and a light camera, that's going to be an asset for you. But if you can't get away with it, you're carrying around a little bit of extra weight um, and just, you know, you're paying for extra cost. You don't always need that. Um, so to me, that's not really a huge asset. I will say one place that's fantastic is sometimes I'll shoot in like middle of a river, walk out with my waders, you find a rock to set your tripod on and it's a rock about that big, not a huge space. You can't set your tripod all the way up because it would be off in the river and less stable. So you set up on that rock and then you go as tall as you can with your center column. The Faisal is going to be amazing for those scenarios because you have your leg section and then the two, it's going to be uh, you know, six, eight inches taller than these other two fully extended. So that is an asset for that type of shooting. I don't do that often. Uh, so for me, it's kind of a, it's a negative because I would use it so infrequently. I just don't love the way, you know, I don't like the way it spins and I don't like the two stages personally. Um, but yeah, so fully up, we go back to here. They're all similar in height. Um, so yeah, it, there's, there's not a lot in it. So you really, you come down to price point. Now let's put them in order of price. Two in the middle are basically $400 tripods. This is seven change, 775 let's call it. This is 175. Now it has a tripod head included in that price and a plate. These are just tripods. They come with bags and tools and accessories and maybe spike feet and the shorter center column, but so does this guy. Um, but it includes a head. Now the head is not what I would call a travel head. It's a little bit bigger. You, I have my P0 on here, which is my ball head for my big set of legs, just to do the comparison. And as I've been shooting with them over the weeks, I've been flipping them back and forth between the three or the four. Now, the Gitzo has my, it's a Sunway photo. It's, it's written on the side. It's an FB28. It is a tiny ball head. It's rated for enough weight to easily carry my cameras. And I used it when I had a five, 5D Mark III. Um, it's solid enough uh, and it works. Now, the thing is, is, if I were to end up with these legs, and it's quite possibly I might because they're half the price of my Siri and the specs are basically the same, um, I would put this head on that and just keep this as a spare. It's a nice head, but it, it's just a little bit heavier and a little bit bigger than what I would normally use for travel. Now, the other big thing about this, and let me show you with the Gitzo because it's right here, is when you go to collapse, and actually we want that up. When you go to collapse these, now watch how easy and quick this is. Three locks, twist it once. Three locks, twist them all at once three locks, 
twist them all at once. Grab the levers, flip it up, flip it up, flip it up. That quick, you go to compact mode. But now, what I want to show you is when you do that, as you get the tripod put away, the diameter of this ball head determines how close these legs can get together. Now, let me hold that. To, hopefully, it's put against the sky. But the smaller this is, the smaller this is in your bag. Um, and that's the big place these two tripod heads wouldn't work in a travel scenario. That bag space is valuable enough. It's worth investing. If you're going to buy a $400 set of carbon fiber legs, it's worth spending the money to get a small ball head to make the whole package compact. Um, again, I will link that head in the review. Um, there's a few other, there's, there's lots of other ball head options. We all know that. Um, this one I like because it's very uncomplicated. There's no pan knob on that, which means you can't pan separately. But it also means it's one less knob, less weight, less complexity. Um, it's a pretty inexpensive head and it's, it's really been amazing for me in the last two years. Um, so yeah, I would put a small head like this on any of the three of these. When you combine a small shape here with a small shape there, you get the smallest possible package in terms of space out of your bag because it's we're, we're thinking volume here. Um, so you really want to go the route to getting a small head. Uh, like I said, these two castings are quite similar in size, so they do get small. L tripods are a little longer, but you get extra length for that and they're less expensive. Um, so for me, let me put it to you this way. I've had and owned my personal tripod, the Siri 1204X. Like, there is an N in that part number two, N1204X. It's been a fantastic tripod, really no complaints. Um, in doing this review and in looking at the low pro bag I'm looking at, I just need shorter legs to fit in it. This physically won't fit by about an inch. And that the bag I'm looking at is a bag I really want uh, for, for multiple purposes that I'll mention in another review. But to get that to work, I need something shorter than this. Um, so that's where these two come in. Between these two, for me, hands down, I would pay the extra money and get the get so. I just like it that much better. Um, Faisal's not a bad tripod at all, but I don't like the two-stage center column. I don't like the feel of the leg locks, um, and I just prefer the, um, the get so. Uh, of these two, I don't see a reason not to get the Davison Sanford. Um, it has the spiked feet. You give up the monopod conversion option, but I've never once used that in two years personally. If you need the monopod, obviously get this. But if you don't, this Davidson Sanford is half the money for the same tripod. It includes the head and the plate to get you started. If you have better plates for your camera, like an L plate or just a gripped plate, um, or you know you, you want to get the size and the weight down, get the smaller head for it. Um, but to start, this value can't be beat. So I would highly recommend this Davidson Sanford. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to keep this myself just to test and see how it holds up. Um, and then I'll, this will go back. I've, I've been able to borrow these two from B&H, so thank you very much to B&H for that. This will be getting sent to B&H. This I'll probably have to end up purchasing from then. I, I don't get to keep it for free. It has to go back or I have to pay for it. So I think I'll probably end up purchasing this to fit in the smaller bag that I need. Uh, but yeah, for me, the two winners here are the Gitzo for the most compact, small option and the Davis for the best value. Uh, like I said, there's really no losers in this group. They're all fantastic tripods. So don't, if you have one, I wouldn't go to this extent to try the others unless you have an overall length issue like I'm having. Um, but yeah, this would have to be my number one recommendation. It's just an amazing value uh, for the price. So definitely check out the Davis and Sanford. Uh, the series a great, been a great tripod for me. It's just for the money, why not save a couple hundred bucks to get the same thing? Uh, the Faisal, is the inexpensive option, but it's still $400 to go for an inch shorter. And then the Gitzo is just amazing. It's, it's the Italian quality is there. It's really great, um, but they're not cheap. So, you know, it's hard to kind of, it's hard to stomach that price. So yeah, this is Ben Jacobson with a travel tripod comparison for you. Hopefully this has helped you kind of see them out in the wild, see them up, see them down. Uh, and just compare and contrast them like I've been doing and uh, make up your mind for you because I know this is not an easy situation. It's not an easy decision and a lot of us can't just go to B&H and see them all um, or other vendors, obviously. Uh, but yeah, for me, it comes down to this for size, the Gitzo, for value, the Davison Sanford, um, and they're all amazing tripods. So 
again, hopefully this helps you make a decision. And thank you for following me and, and watching my reviews. If you have any questions, either leave them on the YouTube channel uh, underneath the video or feel free to comment on my review and I will get back to you. Thank you very much.